Hi guys, welcome back and in this video we are going to discover about one of the most interesting, of course fascinating but also an exclusive motion that happens in the food complex, angle and food complex. That is the pronation and supination twist in angle complex biomechanics. We will discover that complicated and a complex movement in one of the most simplified manner. To understand that supination and pronation twist, of course, we need to know about the tarso metatarsal joint because this movement happens exclusively in tarso metatarsal joint. So let us discover about the pronation supination twist through tarso metatarsal joint. Yes, as I told you, this movement of pronation and supination twist happens in the tarso metatarsal joint. So we need to understand the tarso metatarsal joint biomechanics in order to understand this topic. So tarso metatarsal joint, you already know because we have discussed it exclusively. The tarso metatarsal joint is formed by the metatarsals and the tarsal bones, right? Metatarsals and the tarsal bones. Of course, we have here the talus is the uh, navicular bone is here we have the medial cuneiform here intermediate or middle cuneiform the lateral cuneiform the cuboid we have over here the cuboid and this is the calcaneum and this is the talus so this is the general structure in which the foot um, bones are arranged and of course this tarsal bones associates with uh, this metatarsals for to form the tarso metatarsal joint so the tarso metatarsal joint are this joints this five joints that we have over here between the first metatarsal and medial cuneiform second metatarsal intermediate cuneiform third with the lateral cuneiform fourth with the cuboid fifth with the cuboid if you're someone who is watching this for the first time just go back to the tarso metatarsal joint anatomy video that we have in our channel and then come back to this one that will help you a lot in understanding this concept so if you look here we see that uh, the first metatarsal is articulating with only the medial cuneiform the second is articulating with the intermediate or middle cuneiform at the same time it has slight articulation with the lateral and medial cuneiform the third is exclusively with the lateral cuneiform but you should remember the most important thing over here the lateral cuneiform Sorry, the fourth and fifth one is exclusively articulating with the cuboid bone or lame. So that is something important here. That is first to third, first to third bones are articulating with the cuneiform bone, either medial, intermediate or lateral cuneiform. Fourth and fifth are articulating only with the cuboid bone. Okay, what can it uh, contribute to? Can there be any difference because of this difference in articulation? Of course, there is some difference. To understand that difference, you need to understand a very important topic, very important uh, term over here. That is the concept of ray. Concept of rays. What do you mean by rays? R A Y S. You have heard about rays like sun rays, which is a straight line or the direction in which sun uh, light comes to us that we call it a sun rays. Okay. So similarly, we have a concept over here that is known as a rays. What do you mean by rays? A ray is defined as a functional unit. What is that? It is a functional unit formed by which bone? The metatarsals formed by the metatarsal bones, the metatarsal bones with their cuneiform, with associated cuneiform bone, with their associated cuneiform bone. Oh God. So what about the cuboid? So that's in the difference here. That is, it is a functional unit which is formed by metatarsal bones. Remember metatarsal bone with only the associated cuneiform bone the associated cuneiform can be medial cuneiform it can be middle cuneiform it can be lateral cuneiform lateral cuneiform okay the lateral cuneiform see so array is a functional unit 
which with formed between the metatarsal bones with the associated cuneiform bone whether it is a medial for middle or lateral cuneiform bone so we have here three rays actually one is the first ray second ray third ray okay so first to third rays are actually formed between the metatarsals with metatarsals with the cuneiform but the fourth and fifth ray the fourth and fifth ray is exclusively formed by the metatarsals alone is formed by the metatarsals alone why can you say me any reason for that can you tell me any reason for that that is simple because we have the navicular bone over here and we have the cuneiform bone so we have a joint over here which is known as cuneo navicular joint the joint between cuneiform bone and the navicular bone this joint when we evaluate we see that this cuneo navicular joint is having very less significant functions or it has very insignificant function of its own so what happens is that we consider this cuneo navicular joint as a part of this ray as a part of this ray so this forms a ray so this cuneo navicular joint because it do not have significant function of its own or movements in it all of its own it cannot move a lot or there is very less movements what happens is that this cuneo navicular joint is of course considered to be a part of functional unit of the tarso metatarsal joint or the tmt joint TMT joint. Therefore, we say that the first ray is not, first, second, and third ray is not formed by the metatarsal bone alone, but the associated cuneiform bone also contribute to that motion because cuneiform bone alone cannot have any significant motion possible in the cuneo navicular joint. But here you can understand the difference. Here, this is associated between the calcaneum and the cuboid which one the fourth and fifth rays fourth and fifth metatarsals are associated with the cuboid bone the cuboid is articulated with which one the calcaneum and which is this joint which is this joint this joint is known as calcaneo cuboid joint and joint is known as calcaneo cuboid joint and you know that calcaneo cuboid joint is highly mobile joint it has its own function so we cannot consider cuboid to be a part of this one cuboid has its own movements so we call the fourth and fifth rays are exclusively formed by the fourth and fifth metatarsal alone whereas the first second and third ray is actually a combination of metatarsals with the cuneiform bonds with the associated cuneiform bond if first metatarsals is associated with the medial cuneiform it's with the medial if it is with the second middle it's with the medial if it is with the lateral it is with the lateral cuneiform bonds right so this concept of ray is very important for your understanding of what you call the angle complex biomechanics or food biomechanics. So get into mind this concept of ray. And now moving from the rays, uh, for understanding movement at any joint, what do you need? What do you need to understand? We need to understand we need to understand the axis of course you know right now how far how what is the strategy of our discussion we describe the joint we understand the axis we go for the movements so we need to know the axis of movement the axis of all these three joints now five joints now if we evaluate the axis of first ray okay we evaluate the axis of second ray we can evaluate third ray fourth and ray and fifth ray okay so we want to understand the axis of each of this ray why is it important we want to see each of this because each of this is an individual joints so we have five joints over here and now if we evaluate the axis of all, all of this rays we see some peculiarities what is that what is that one of the important thing is that almost all axes in the angle complex are oblique in nature 
so the angle complex axis are oblique in nature and if you see the ray the first rays axis the first ray is of course involving the navicular bone the sorry the cuneiform bone and the metatarsal so it will start from here and passes through this is the uh, passes through the middle cuneiform and travels like this so this is the axis of first ray an oblique axis which passes from uh, nearly uh, from the navicular bone or through the uh, to the middle of the medial cuneiform bone and passes over like this so this is the axis of first ray whereas the axis of second ray it starts from the cuboid bone uh, slightly passes through the lateral cuneiform and to the center of middle cuneiform and passes on like this so this would be the axis of second fifth ray so this is the axis of fifth ray and this is the axis of first ray so we have got two axis of motion of first and fifth rays right yes now we see that this axis is an oblique axis this axis is an oblique axis when an axis is an oblique axis it will have what sort of movement it will have triplanar movement you know it right now okay we have we have because we have studied throughout the angle complex about the triplanar movements right yes so this is an oblique axis and it's a triplanar movement also okay and now what about the second ray what about the third fourth and fifth ray fifth ray also we got as an oblique axis and triplanar and triplanar okay now when we come to the second ray and the fourth ray which is the second and fourth ray we see that this axis are oblique or inclined oblique or inclined but not inclined as not as first ray first or fifth ray so this is having an oblique orientation but it is not as oblique as the first or second ray because you can see that from here if this axis is uh, oblique like this this is the first ray's axis second rays would be coming like this somewhat over here somewhat over here the third rays it will be coming somewhat over here fourth rays it will be coming like this so the obliquity of that axis will decrease so we see that it is oblique and inclined but not as oblique as the first ray or the fifth ray so that is the axis of second and fifth ray sorry fourth ray what about the third ray see this fin see this trend over here the axis obliquity decreases and decreases the fourth ray almost appear to be in the sagittal plane the fourth ray almost appear to be in the sagittal plane and thus it appears to be in the sagittal plane because it's almost a straight one as uh, the obliquity of that axis decreases so these are the axis of motion of tarso metatarsal joint don't confuse or don't worry about studying this because this is simple you don't have to study about which through which bone this is going to pass this is passing through the navicular it's passing through the medial cuneiform you don't need to study like that just draw a diagram just draw a straight line uh, an oblique line remember it passes through the middle cuneiform so you'll get the correct answer when it passes through the middle cuneiform both sides you get the answers you don't have to draw the third and fourth or you don't have to draw the second one just try to understand and draw a diagram of first and fifth rays that's so simple it is an x like shape it is simply x shaped and x center is the middle cuneiform middle cuneiform just have to remember that okay now when we evaluate the first ray we see that the first ray is most mobile one most mobile one it is having the largest range of motion it is having the largest range of motion the fifth ray is also mobile like the first ray mobile like the first ray first ray okay fifth ray is also mobile like the first ray whereas the second ray is the least mobile one the second ray is the least mobile one okay now we see if we evaluate each of this individual ray first ray we see that it's a most mobile and range of motion is highest second ray is the least mobile third is of course mobile fourth is of course mobile fifth is again highly mobile but range of motion is less in the fifth row also fifth ray also so this is a general trend in this rays okay now what are the movement that is going to happen in this race of course it's a triplanar 
except in the third ray which is almost in straightly in the sagittal plane all other rays are straight planar movements so in the third ray it would be just dorsiflexion plantar flexion third ray it would be dor just dorsiflexion and dorsiflexion and plantar flexion whereas in the other rays it will be a combination of movement let us see that what are the combination of this movement this will help you a lot in understanding the supination and pronation twist okay so we are going to see what are the movements that is happening in all this rays okay so the first ray the first ray movement the first ray is actually formed between the middle cuneiform and which one the first metatarsal that is the medial side of your foot okay the movement that is possible is of course dorsiflexion plantar flexion the dorsiflexion and plantar flexion which are the subtalar movements okay which are the angle joint movements are dorsiflexion and plantar flexion now this dorsiflexion and plantar flexion is of course having the component of triplanar movement so there should be the other movements which are the inversion inversion abduction adduction okay now if we look in the first ray you try to dorsiflex your first ray first metatarsal alone when you try to dorsiflex the first metatarsal alone we see that it is going for it is going for a peculiar shape of motion that is it is going for inversion and adduction what is that it is going for inversion and adduction when it is going for plantar flexion plantar flexion it is going for what sort of movement it is going for inversion and abduction inversion and abduction that is the first ray now we need to see the most mobile one which is the fifth ray of course second third and fourth are list not that mobile so we don't have to worry about that the fifth ray we see that when the fifth ray is going for dorsiflexion the moment is dorsiflexion itself okay and the plantar flexion it is also having the component known as inversion abduction adduction what is happening you just try to uh, you just try to uh, dorsiflex your fifth ray fifth ray will be the little finger similar to the little finger over here we will see an illustration later okay you can see this one when this is going for like this this foot is going to get inverted so the dorsiflexion will be combined by inversion and inversion will be combined by abduction inversion will be combined by abduction so in the fifth ray what is the movement happening it is uh, the movement is a uh, inversion with abduction see the opposite happens over here and the plantar flexion will be followed by inversion and adduction so can you can you see a pattern over here the first ray when it is going for dorsiflexion this is going for inversion and adduction the exact opposite happens in the fifth ray dorsiflexion this is what is going to contribute to your supination pronation twist let us have an illustration over this because i think that you are confused right now as yes, guys we are going to see the motion of the first ray what is the motion that is happening in the first ray i told you that the first ray the motion is going to be dorsiflexion okay the dorsiflexion let us try to dorsiflex the first row see this is going to be the dorsiflexion of the first row first row has to first ray has to come up this is the first ray up to here so this ray has to come up okay when this ray is coming up just see what is happening with just see what is happening this is foot is getting inverted so you have an inversional component not an inversional component like this you have an inversion and this foot is going to the midline so adduction so can you guess that so this is the first ray you can just imagine this is the first ray when i am putting in this now this is a neutral position when i am going for dorsiflexion this is the dorsiflexion now of the first row so when it's got to going for dorsiflexion this way foot is going for adduction and inversion i just exaggerated that for you to understand so this much motion is not going to happen so the first ray dorsiflexion is accompanied by inversion adduction whereas it's a plantar flexion is accompanied by so this is the plantar flexion this is accompanied by inverse inversion see the foot is getting inverted see it is accompanied by inversion and abduction so foot is going away from the midline so abduction okay that is the first ray motion inversion is a uh, dorsiflexion is combined by inversion adduction plantar flexion is combined by inversion and abduction clear whereas the fifth ray what is happening fifth ray see the dorsiflexion in the fifth ray this is the fifth ray it let it dorsiflex 
See, when it is rorsiflexing, the foot is getting everted. Simply, you can understand that. The foot is getting everted. Eversion means the foot will go away from the midline. That is abduction. So, it is combined by eversion and abduction. Whereas, it's plantar flexion. You can see that the plantar flexion, if you do it like this, the plantar flexion is producing inversion. The foot again gets inverted and adducted. So, this is just a reciprocal relationship between first and fifth row. So that is going to help in the supination and pronation twist. Let us discover that. So I hope that uh, it's clear. Okay. With uh, what is the first ray movement? What is the second ray, fourth and fifth ray movement? How this is reciprocally related to? Now let us move on to the most important aspect of this discussion. That is the pronation, supination, twist. Uh, that is the supination twist. Okay. What is happening in the supination twist? For example, in supination twist, uh, imagine a situation in which our rear foot is pronated. Rear foot is pronated. What is happening? The rear foot is pronated. The subtalar joint or rear foot is pronated in weight bearing. Okay, in weight bearing. What can happen here? We studied in the transverse tarsal joint. So once again, I tell you that if somebody is going to look into this pronation supination twist without uh, listening to the previous video just have it and uh, come back to this video so the rear foot uh, rear foot pronation okay what is happening in the rear foot pronation so when rear foot is going for pronation you can see that uh, the next joint over here the s-shaped subtalar joint the s-shaped subtalar sorry transverse tarsal joint the s-shaped transverse tarsal joint is actually going for what happens the opposite movement that is the supination because we studied this earlier what happens actually because you know that just look at this diagram if this is the foot the rear foot is going for pronation if my transverse tarsal joint also moves for pronation what will happen my lateral side of the foot will come away from the ground and i may fall down okay my medial side only will be contacting the ground so you have to maintain the contact of the lateral side for this uh, the transverse tarsal joint like this one the metatarsal metatarsal joint similar to that the transverse tarsal joint over here will go for supination so even though this is pronated over here here what happens the supination happens so whenever there is a pronation in the um, subtalar the rear foot in weight bearing situation what happens is that supination is the movement that is mostly accompanied in the which joint the transverse tarsal joint the transverse tarsal joint transverse tarsal joint now let us see him if there is a situation so when transverse tarsal joint is going for supination it's fine everything is perfect my foot is on the ground but if there is a situation in which the transverse tarsal joint cannot go for complete prone supination that means your transverse tarsal joint is blocked in going for complete supination your forefoot should anyhow come into the ground for your stability the forefoot should go for the ground so the next joint the next immediate joint to the transverse tarsal joint is your this joint the tarso metatarsal joint so that function will be taken over by the tarso metatarsal joint tarso metatarsal joint that is if your transverse tarsal joint is not going for uh, supination complete what can happen actually here there is a problem happening your medial side will be in contact medial side in contact hmm? whereas your lateral side will lift off lateral side will lift off that's not good that should be somehow balanced that is done by your tarso metatarsal joint tarso metatarsal joint will come into action over here how how is it going to happen because we studied what was the function of the first ray first ray remember the function of the first ray is often refer uh, deferring from the fifth ray now imagine this situation the first your foot is like this your foot is pronated there is no supination happening what is happening this is your first ray first metatarsal 
that's in contact with what? It's in contact with the ground. So the ground will exert a force upward like this. So this is the first way. It is contact in my ground in with the ground. This side is the lateral side is lifted off. The ground will pull a force like this. This force is known as ground reaction force. This ground reaction force will what? Will cause dorsiflexion. This ground reaction force will cause dorsiflexion of the first ray. What is happening? It will cause first ray will go for dorsiflexion. And remember the dorsiflexion in the first ray is combined by that is why I told you that earlier. The dorsiflexion is combined by inversion and adduction. Inversion and adduction. Okay? Inversion and adduction. So the first ray is in ground. What about the fifth ray? Now the fifth ray, there is no ground reaction force. The fifth ray muscles, the fifth ray's muscle will contract in such a way that there is plantar flexion at the fifth ray because this is standing like this. This should touch the ground. This is the ground. This should definitely touch the ground like this. Huh? So that fifth ray will go for plantar flexion. Fifth ray will go for plantar flexion. What is happening? Fifth ray goes for plantar flexion. The muscles of the fifth ray will produce plantar flexion. And remember, the plantar flexion in the fifth ray is also accompanied by opposite movement of dorsiflexion. That is same. That is the inversion. That is the adduction. About right, that is the inversion and adduction. Now you see the mechanism over here. There is a complete inversion of here. Inversion is going to produce the supination. The supination twist. So this is the mechanism. So the pronation is over here. The first ray is also going for inversion. The fifth ray is also going for inversion. Look at this one. Okay. If the first ray is going for inversion and plantar flexion like this, this is like this. If the fifth is also going for plantar flexion like this, there is actually a rotation of inversion. An inversional rotation happening in the forefoot. There is an inversional rotation that is happening in the forefoot or the transverse tarsal joint. So this inversion rotation that is happening in the transverse tarsal joint is of course your supination twist. Is of course that's producing supination. So that is the supination twist. Am I clear? So that's so simple. This is just the inversional twist that is happening in the foot. That is known as the supination twist. Clear? Am I clear? Yes, I think so. Yes, so that's so simple. The rear foot is pronated. The supination should happen in the transverse tarsal joint. If supination cannot occur completely, it's going to produce medial side uh, in the ground, lateral side lift off. That is balanced by your TMT, that is a transverse tarsal joint. For first ray produce dorsiflexion, inversion, adduction. Fifth ray produce plantar flexion, inversion, adduction. So totally you have an inversional component. Adduction component is very minimal. So you don't have to worry about that. So the inversion twist in the the ray's first and fifth ray or the transverse tarsal joint is producing the supination twist. What is that? The supination twist. Okay. Now, why did I tell that uh, the transverse tarsal joint is restricted in its range of motion? Why did I tell that the transverse tarsal joint is restricted in its range of motion? You can see, imagine a situation in which your foot is pronated. When his foot is pronated, like your calcaneum will go for eversion. No, so when there is a calcaneal eversion in the weight bearing, the talar function is its opposite. We studied in the subtalar joint. You must remember that the talus will go for adduction. The talus will go for adduction. Okay, and plantar flexion. The talus will go for adduction and plantar flexion. Okay, exactly opposite. The subtalar joint is having three articular surfaces. We studied that. So the talus is go for adduction and abduction. So the, it will pull the navicular bone which is associated with that. So the talus is associated with the navicular, of course you can see here. So it will pull the navicular bone or it will restrict the range of motion of the navicular bone. If navicular is not restricted, of course the first ray action is, the transverse tarsal joint action is restricted. The navicular bone is restricted, the taro navicular joint, that is the transverse tarsal joint action is restricted. So the transverse tarsal joint cannot go for supination. Then what is this? The transverse tarsal joint cannot go for supination. So who will take over that function? Of course, 
the transverse, the tarsal metatarsal joint. That is the mechanism or that is the time when supination twist comes into action. When there is insufficient movement or your transverse tarsal joint is restricted to range of motion. That is happening in extremes of pronation. When there is an extreme pronation happening in the rear foot, there will be restriction in the transverse tarsal joint motion. Now let us look on to the pronation twist. So, when rear foot is in supination, rear foot is in supination, of course. What happens in supination? Your transverse tarsal joint, your transverse tarsal joint, of course, should go for what? Pronation. If that is, your rear foot is going for supination like this, okay, it's getting supinated like this, your transverse tarsal joint should go for what? The pronation it should move for this moment so that your medial side of the foot is in ground exactly opposite to that one so what happens in this scenario when there is a restriction in the transverse tarsal joint motion or the rear foot motion so the medial side lifts off over here so what happens if there is a restriction on this the medial side lift off medial side lift off exactly opposite lift off okay and lateral side comes in contact with the ground lateral foot lateral side or lateral border is in contact with the ground okay so your transverse tarsal joint is restricted it cannot function it has given its function to the tarso metatarsal joint so here again your tarso metatarsal joint comes into action which one your tarso metatarsal joint again comes into action what is the transverse tarso metatarsal joint going to do Okay, now you see here there is the first ray and fifth ray, of course. Now the fifth ray is in contact with the ground, right? Because the lateral border is in contact with the ground. So the fifth ray is in contact with the ground. Ground exerts a dorsiflexion. Ground exerts a dorsiflexion moment in the fifth ray. Fifth ray is uh, producing dorsiflexion. Earlier, fifth ray was producing plantar flexion. Okay, and first ray should come in contact with the ground. So the first two ray muscles work in such a way as to produce plantar flexion. So the first two ray will be producing plantar flexion. Now what is happening? You know that when there is plantar flexion in the first two ray, it is going for which movement? Eversion and abduction. It is going for eversion and abduction. Similarly, when there is dorsiflexion in the fifth row, it also goes for eversion and abduction. See this one? See the fifth row, it is going for dorsiflexion. It is getting lifted. So it is going for eversion. First row is going for plantar flexion like this. So that also goes for the eversion. So what is happening over here? In this movement, there is an eversion twist. There is an eversion twist. Eversion rotation twist. That is producing the pronation. So, eversion twist produce the pronation twist in the transverse tarsal joint. So, I hope that is it clear for you. So, here the scenario is exactly opposite. Rear foot is in supination. The transverse tarsal joint is in pronation. But there is uh, some restriction to the transverse tarsal joint pronation. So, it cannot function well. So, the medial side lift off. Lateral side is in ground. We have to keep the medial side in the ground. Lateral side also should be in the ground. So, the lateral side we have the fifth ray which go for the dorsiflexion, inversion and abduction because of the ground reaction force. Whereas, in the medial side you have the uh, which ray? So, that is the first ray which goes for plantar flexion, eversion and abduction and thus what happens is that in both sides uh, there is a uh, completely there is eversional component so what happens what happens over there this one is going for the supination so here there is a problem here there is supination over here this was here there is in the rear foot there is supination so the forefoot should go for pronation the pronation should has to be done by the transverse tarsal joint but it's not able to do so this function is taken over by the transverse tars tarso metatarsal joint so the tarso tarso metatarsal joint is having an eversional component and this eversional component will produce which movement which will produce the pronation so ultimately you get the pronation over there so this is what you know by pronation and supination twist i hope that is a very simple thing 
because once you understand that let us go for an illustration Hi guys let's have an illustration of all this because it can help you to understand the concept more in depth like if you have a practical oriented approach now see in this scenario you can try this with me so if um, in supination twist your rear foot is in pronation like this so it's in pronation maximum pronation like this you can see that what is happening to the lateral side of the foot the lateral side has actually got lifted off from the ground now I cannot stand over on this um, uh, in this way for a long time or I cannot do my functional task my lateral side has to come to the ground Okay. my lateral side has to come to the ground so that function will be done by your transverse tarsal joint over here so you have the transverse tarsal joint over here this will do the function so it will produce the supination okay so when there is a pronation over here transverse tarsal joint is producing supination but there is a scenario there are scenarios in which your transverse tarsal joint is not free to move we discovered that scenario what is that okay at this scenario what is happening your tarso metatarsal joint which we discuss now has to do the function and you can see that this is the fifth ray this is the first ray so the first ray is in contact with the ground so the ground will be putting some force from the ground to the side okay away from the ground towards the first row that is actually which movement this is the ground reaction force is producing so the first ray will go for a dorsiflexion will get up okay it will make it will go for dorsiflexion this is this is actually happening in the ip joint so you don't uh, um, confuse ip joint with the first ray first ray is here okay so it will actually produce a slight amount of dorsiflexion and that dorsiflexion will provide inversion and adduction as we discussed earlier at the same time your fifth ray is away from the ground so the fifth ray musculature will produce a plantar flexion and inversion so here is inversion here is inversion so both sides it get inverted this is known as the inversion twist so the first ray is getting dorsiflexion your fifth ray is away from the ground fifth ray will go for plantar flexion the plantar flexion is actually provided by uh, providing an inversion component a majority of inversion component so that actually we get the supination see you get a twist over here in the total limb that is known as the supination twist that is happening in the tarso metatarsal joint so supination twist happens in the tarso metatarsal joint and its aim is that the pronation over here should be balanced the exact opposite if there is supination over here you can see that this is what happening your medial side will go away from the ground your lateral side is on the ground so ground exerts a dorsiflexion force over here that dorsiflexion is accompanied by eversional component which we discussed earlier here it is the plan this the um, first to raise muscles has to work to produce plantar flexion the plantar flexion is again producing an eversional component so what happens here when there is supination over here there happens pronation over here this is known as the pronation shift so supination here pronation over here that is a pronation twist that is eversional rotation this is an inversional rotation this we wind up the session and if you like the video don't forget to click the like button and kindly subscribe to our channel